So today we're gonna do an alcohol ink video. A little while ago I said to Madeline, what's all this talk about alcohol ink? Everyone's talking about alcohol ink. And she said, oh, I've been doing samples with our stuff and making alcohol ink. And I was like, really? Let's see. And then she showed me this crazy high gloss stuff on this alcohol ink paper. And I was like, what? That's insane. And then Clara from Art Prof came over here and she was like, what? That's crazy. And then she posted it and all these people are like, what? That's nuts. So now we're going to do a proper video. And take it away, man. to uh, urethane to get thinner coats for a little while and um, as I'm always telling people urethane 32 has excellent adherence to metal plastic glass anything like that so I knew it was a natural for alcohol ink paper which tends to be this really sort of like sealed surface that's super smooth so our so, we're using this one. We bought this alcohol ink paper, which is um, <coughs> this totally non-absorbent, uh, I think it's made with polypropylene. It's almost like a plasticky kind of surface. Yeah, it, so one thing that I noticed people commenting about is the gloss. Part of the gloss that you're seeing with this is coming from the smoothness and sealedness of this paper. Uh, this this finish is reflecting what it's on. If you're on a rougher surface, a more absorbent surface, it's gonna look really different. And we have samples that illustrate that. That's just totally. This is the Aquazole <laughs> here, which is different from the urethane. I know there's some confusion about that right now. Aquazole is a resoluble binder that we have that's also soluble in alcohol. So I started doing tests with that because I was like, oh, I'm, I bet that would be cool. It is cool. Actually, it's really cool. Okay, it so looks yeah, great. Let's show the difference. Normally, watercolor is matte. Aquazole makes a matte watercolor, makes gouache that looks matte, but that's on absorbent paper with a lot of water added. Whenever you add water to binder, whether that's on acrylic, making acrylic inks, or whether it's this Aquazole or anything, you're going to decrease the sheen. In this case, this is a higher concentration and uh, you've got a sealed surface so none of the aquazole is sinking into the surface and showing the surface of the paper so it stays glossy even though aquazole is not normally glossy uh, you get this really kind of cool glossy surface the difference between making alcohol ink with urethane 32 and making alcohol ink with aquazole is that the aquazole is resoluble the urethane 32 is not resoluble so here I was testing different things you could do with the resolubility of Aquazole. You can see this beautiful Benzmedazzo R5R is our Aquazole theme color. Uh, here I let this dry completely and then I wiped it out with water. Here I ran a piece of water, a uh, swipe of water across it and I blotted it with a paper towel. It has a nice texture. This is where I put a little like dribble of alcohol across it after it dried and let it redry. This is with the urethane 32 spread across it. People were wondering what happens if you put acrylic or urethane over the aquazole on the paper. This is what happens with urethane 32. This is what happens with urethane 40. This is what happens with urethane flat. This is what happens with the silica flat. Oh, interesting. This is Look what this happens with the acrylic one, 65. Nice, smooth crackle patterns. It's We've been making crackle patterns with our like water swallowable cell. clay. And it looks good, but it's got little lips. It's like, it's like desert mud cracked up. This is a really smooth crackle finish, but you're also showing a lot of the color that's behind. So I wanna experiment more with layering maybe this over like a urethane that's not gonna lift so that when you get these lightened areas, it's gonna be a color instead of the light background. I still need to test that. Let's jump to actually making it. Okay, sounds good. And then we'll good. go back and talk more about the samples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so here I got some urethane 32. Here I've got some aquazole. I'm going to grab some beautiful phthalo turquoise. Always shake your dispersions before you add them. And I'm just gonna give it a little drop. Whoa. Great. 
great strange reality. All right. Oh, this is just straight urethane. I haven't added any alcohol to this yet. I just want to show you how it paints out on the paper. Look. Absolutely beautiful, like urethane always is. Urethane 32, I usually try to let people know that there's like a minimum film thickness for the self-leveling to work. If you use it right out of the bottle, you want to have one of these thicker coats if you want it to have really good self-leveling. If it's a really skimpy, dry coat like this, you're going to get a little bit of streakiness. Well, it's self-leveling right off of the brush. But what happens is if you add a little bit of alcohol, you can decrease the minimum film thickness. I'm going to do... Uh, one to four here as my starter just stir it up comes together pretty quickly and so we're talking to customers which one are we doing right now we're doing the 32 so this one is 32 by itself this is the 32 with a little bit of the alcohol. I feel like I could kick up this color. Good thing I'm working with pigment dispersions. It's easy to kick up the amount of color that I have if I feel like it. Boy, it is really, really stringy. It's great. And which pigment do you have there? They love turquoise. Okay. Um, so for people who are new to us, we are a paint component system, so that means we give you the parts that normally go into a pre-made paint, i.e. the pigment dispersion, which is the liquid pigment concentrate, and the binder. And then you mix it together yourself. And it's super easy. Add a little bit more alcohol, and we'll see how these marks continue to loosen up as I add more alcohol. Oh, sorry, I'm like punching the camera. Yeah. Uh, we can see how that urethane alcohol mixture is just flowing out, especially on this yeah. slick paper. Yeah, it just starts to self-level more as you add more of the, I'm being more conservative because I made a bigger batch here. It's really like, crank it up to one to one here. It's so funny how the, what's that, the phthalo turquoise? Mm -hmm. It looks so different on the screen, phthalos are. Really? Yeah, it doesn't, what's look, it look, as, like? doesn't look as green. Huh. That's crazy. Yeah. You can see that I added a bunch of the alcohol to this one, and so it's really, really flowy now. The copper and the phthalos makes them look a little different on camera. Hmm. I'm just going to be hedonistic with the paint here. But also, just to show um, how it looks when got something that's a little bit contrasting in it. And I'm just going to add a little bit of this super shine silver here. Oh, super shine, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's make it sparkly. And I'm just going to drip it in. Now, if I want to have metal spots, the, there's a really funny movement quality to the way that it spreads when it's got alcohol in it. it really sort of bursts out there. But yeah, so that is the urethane here. It's crazy looking.
let me just put this in a safe location. Okay. Uh, so let's go back to the dried samples. This one. So this one is the urethane by itself, all the way on the left. So the urethanes are self-leveling, they dry super glossy, just by themselves. Then this is one part alcohol, two parts alcohol, three parts alcohol, four parts alcohol. Let's see, and where is that other sample? And this is the dried sample what Madeline was just painting with a different color. No, I was painting urethane. That's, that's the oh, just now you were painting yeah. urethane? Okay. Yeah, I want to do the aquas on that. Okay. All right. So, we might as well show this crazy sample. This is just different mixes. This was all alcohol? Yeah, all, all urethane with alcohol. You can see how this orange that has a little bit more alcohol in it with this uh, quinacridone violet there that has a little bit more urethane in it, how they hold their shape differently with the different concentrations. It, you can get some really interesting effects changing your dilution. Cool, weird things in there. Yeah. Okay. So I guess let's do the other paint out. Okay. And let me just grab another brush here. And this time I'll use a big brush. Alright, and this time I will grab Indent um, Blue Green because it's an amazing color. So, Aquasol. And then throw on to make it dark. So you've got the aquas aquasol mixture in there, right? Yeah, now. yeah. Okay. So when when I hydrated the aquasol, it came out to be about five parts alcohol to one part aquasol in the hydration. This is what the aquasol looks like by itself. You have to leave it sitting in the alcohol overnight. You want to shake it up pretty good. We don't make Aquazole, so Aquazole is just another option of a binder. It's made by a company called uh, Polymer Chemistry Innovations. And you can go to polychemistry.com to read all about Aquazole. They're using it in all kinds of stuff. What are the other uses you read about, Madeline? Pills, mascara, yeah. stuff like that. The FDA has approved it for food. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, here is just right out of the bottle. It's already yeah. fairly gorgeous. Yeah, and then this one is so gorgeous. I'm so glad that we got this color back. Oh, man. Oh, it's great. Fabulous. All right, let's let's loosen it up a little bit more with some alcohol here. Beautiful grind. So that Aquazol mix was what, 50-50? No, that was that was right straight out of the bottle there. Uh, now I'm adding more of the alcohol to it. Straight out of this bottle. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and this bottle, you probably already said this, but I'm just recapping. So we had this bottle mixed up that hasn't totally dissolved yet. Yeah, I'd say about one part of the aquasol to five parts of the alcohol okay. is what the solution is. But yeah, here it is with, and it's crazy because normally this is going to be a matte watercolor when I make it with water and I need to use uh, a few little additives like uh, the dextrin and glycerin for colors like Indian Thrones, Benzmedazzle and stuff like that. I do not have to do that with the Aquasol if I'm making these alcohol inks with it. These colors do not flocculate on the UFO paper at all. Um, yeah, really nice, luminous, glossy. Uh, you could blow it out a little bit more. 
Alright, if you want to see that, I don't know, should we, should we drop anything into this one? Oh, why not? We okay. should try to wrap it up. We're at 14. Okay, do you want to show minutes. this glass? Oh yeah, the glass. Let's break out the glass. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll play with this on my own time. Okay, we'll do, we'll do more videos. Yeah, yeah. Alright. Here's our white paper. We Here. were playing with it on glass. As I mentioned, urethane has great Hold adherence. On, let me move this. Oh, okay. So safe. <laughs> so safe with the That's way you're doing it. <laughs> All right, yeah, this is a sample I made on glass because I remembered that urethane has great adherence on glass. Yeah, as urethane well. is great on glass. I put some interference pigments in. It's kind of fun because looking through interference pigments is fun anyway because when you look through them in the light, it goes from blue interference and orange interference to whoa, it flips and now it looks orange and blue. Uh, also, the shadows that it casts are the opposite of the interference. It's like, wow, I could just drop this right on top or not. Yeah, this is hard to capture on camera, but the shadows underneath this interference orange are blue on this paper, and the shadow under the interference blue is orange. So it does this strange. I feel like the real star here is this quinacridone violet. I mean, it's a transparent pigment. It's so, I mean, I could clean this glass a little better, but yeah, it just shows off the undertone so beautifully. I'm like totally in love with it. I so gotta do. Is one of these the urethane? This is the urethane on this side. This one over here is the aquasol. Okay. So, so this one's resoluble. This one's resoluble. And this one is not. Yeah, and also it cuts really nice with the razor too, which is a great oh, thing. It's so right. much nicer than tape lines. Yes. Um, well, I mean, tape would be nice too, but it's nice to go in and be able to scrape out stuff you don't want to do. It looks great from the other side too. Oh, yeah. Nice, nice and clean, no smudgies. Beauty. So there it is. That's my story about. All right. Oh, thanks, Madeline. All right, thanks for filming, welcome. Marco. <laughs> right. Thank you, Sarah, for letting yes. me play with Of course. We'll do more. Okay. Sounds good.